right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and as always with me today is Mr. Jake Peters. We are PS This Is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast, and this is episode 270. This is a show where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation. Before we get on with this show, I want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. YouTube.com slash PS This Is Awesome. If you want to make fun of our trophy list on the PlayStation Network, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw01. You can always write us at PS This Is Awesome at gmail.com. And most importantly, don't forget to share the show with your friends and make sure to leave comments and rate the podcast as you see fit. As a reminder, we are video podcast, so you can watch this show on YouTube. A little redundant there because we told you to subscribe to the channel, but we do have the video podcast version over there. And uh, I guess if you don't watch on YouTube and you're listening on your favorite platform, just subscribe to us there too. And uh, for new and or longtime listeners, if we have, uh, we now have a Patreon, sorry, excuse me, where you can support our show at a $1 level. The Patreon tier is called the one and only $1 Club. Head over to patreon.com slash PS This Is Awesome for a measly $1 a month. We'll give you one of these free die cut vinyl stickers in the mail. We'll give you a shout out on the show and you can walk away feeling like you've done a good deed each month by supporting us. To keep the show alive. And with that out of the way, Jake, how are you doing today? Um, about the same as the last time you asked me. Yeah. Uh, Ten minutes ago. I'm so, so sorry. We're having some really fucking wild storms here again today. I, I'm, a, I'm assuming you didn't lose power at all today. It flickered, but Did that you? was it. Okay, yeah, we lost power out here for like an hour or so. And then in the afternoon, um, it was fucking crazy. I mean, I I went outside my the outdoor unit for my air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So I have central air and, you know, the outside compressor. They're usually like, I don't know, a three three foot by three foot box or something like that. The, The wind blew it off of the platform. It was still attached to the wall. So I had to, like, go out and, like, move it back where it goes and... There's all like kinds of freaking trees down and shingles all off my house and crap. I got to call the insurance company, but that's so um, frustrating. And then like I bought stuff earlier when I was at Walmart. I've been like a, I Walmart's not like the best place to do this, but like I've been hankering for some kind of like curry. So I bought I bought just like a pre-mixed kind of curry stuff mm-hmm. and I got some chicken and I got some naan to go with it. And I was going to get some white rice, but then I was like, ah, oh, we got some at home. Right. I'll just, I'll just check it home. And if we don't, I'll just run out to Dollar General or whatever. Pick up a box of minute rice or something. And I got home and I dicked around. I checked in the thing. Uh, no white rice. Mm. So like me, a little bit before we started the podcast or tried to start the podcast, I was like, okay, I'll run down to Dollar General quick and get some rice so that we can uh, – we can uh, make dinner right after we podcast, and um, all the stores are closed. That's Basically, wild. every single store in the area has a sign on it that says, Power's out, store's closed. So I'm guessing all these places probably closed when the power went out, mm-hmm. and then they just are going to stay closed the rest of the day. They're just like, forget which, about it. Which is fine. I understand that, but it's not something I thought about until I had already like driven out to this, you know, to where I was going to go. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, all right, fuck it. Um, cause there are some places around us that still don't have power. So, but thankfully it's not as bad as last weekend. Like last weekend, like your whole town was without power. Dude, so, it was awful. For like 24 hours. Yeah. Which is wild. My buddy out in Stoneboro so, ran out of power today. He said it was out for like four or five hours and Titusville, the ironworks were down, but they said, just come on out. They had a generator. And then like, that was today. And then our friend Keith has not had power for five days. Or something, something ridiculous. So I don't know if I believe him, number one. And number two, uh, I kind of do believe him. I don't know. I don't believe anything that he says. <laughs> Literally ever. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I suppose. But other than that, <laughs> uh, doing okay, feeling better than I was last week. And, uh, Still a little bit, a little got a little something, something in the back of my throat, some uh, some some snotty goodness. But other than that, uh, feeling feeling okay. Spent some time outside after the storm. There was like a sunny period for like half an hour. Really so I nice. Kind of hung out outside and 
and just uh, walked around and assessed the damage. But other than that, doing fine. Good. I'm happy to hear it. I'm very happy to hear it. And, uh, ah, man, I keep forgetting that I shaved. And uh, I don't think I had seen you since I had shaved. And I walked into work. I say I shaved on like a Saturday. I walked into work and everyone was just fucking looking at me weird. And then I, rem- I remembered that I had shaved. And then some people were like, we have some new workers in our, in where, we, where I'm at. And uh, they had never seen me with a clean face. And they didn't know it was me. Like, it's that drastic. Like, they were, oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You look like a, the one lady was like, you kind of look like a baby now. And I was like, yeah, I kind of do. So I've got a nice clean face for, face for spring. I feel good about it. Easier to eat food. Uh, it's a uh, little, feel, I feel a little cleaner. Um, but I like to grow that big, long ass, dirty freaking beard in the wintertime. So uh, it's gone. So for the uh, listeners and not the watchers, I am. I'm back, baby. Uh, The other thing, we are starting our our bathroom renovation uh, kind of this week. We're not doing much of the renovating ourselves. We're just gutting it. But you lent me some tools today. We met up at the Walmart parking lot. And that place was just a shit show, man. Nothing gets my anxiety and like, just like, get the fuck. I got to get out of here. Like that vibe than going into like a crowded Walmart. Like that place was bustling. Yeah, see, here's my thing is I don't mind it. What what gets me what gets my blood going is when people are not conscious of the fact that it's busy and they just fucking dawdle and they stand in the way and talk to their friends or they like just dilly dally like trying to pick out what fucking teriyaki sauce they want on the mm. shelf. It's like Bro, there's 5,000 people here. Know what you want. Grab it and go. Keep, this isn't browse keep hour. Moving. Right. If you're the t- if you're a fucking browser, then and you're like a 65 year old, come on like a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> Don't fucking be doing this shit on Saturday. Yeah, when we're all at work. Saturday morning. Come back. It's yeah. Like it. I, I like it's not. I agree with you. There are times where I do get anxious when it's just like you you can't escape people. Like everyone's in your way. You're constantly Ugh. saying, excuse me, sorry, all this stuff. But that – and like Sarah's like that. My wife, she gets super anxious around crowds like oh, that. I can't stand but, it, yeah. But what bugs me is more that is like people's etiquette. Like they don't – Yeah. That, they well, act yeah. the same if there's nobody in the store or if there's like 5,000 people in the store. It's like – Oh, and I don't know if you noticed this too. They stripped out all the white tile. Yeah, it looks great. Um, Do you like it? And I fucking hate it. Oh, I love it. Dude, it, it looks so much dude, better. Dude, it makes this. It makes the store seem so much darker and more depressing. Well, that is now true. That the floor, that the floor is not white anymore. <laughs> you speak my It was language. one of the things that I always was. It was one of these things that I was trying to put my finger on about the Meadville Walmart. Is I was like. Why does this place always seem less depressing than every other Walmart that mm, I ever go it's into? The floor, it was the floor. And suddenly they stripped the fucking tile off of the floor. This is great. And now I'm like, oh, I get it. Now it's darker in here. And it just feels more industrial and depressing. And I don't know, man. Walmart's one of those places where you need to make everybody feel happy because I'm surprised there aren't more fucking riots in those places. Yeah. Just I don't know. Everybody wants everything. I don't know. Yeah, there could be some anyway, science behind. We don't have to talk about Walmart it's behind but. the gray floors, but yeah, man, I don't know. I get in there, and the thing that drives me nuts is not only what you said, like it's watching how other people behave, but like I'm one of those people that, like, when I'm not in your way, I still feel like I'm fucking in your way, and it's just like I'm constantly like looking over my shoulder and trying to be the most fucking courteous person I can be in public, like. Like, okay, there's someone coming down the aisle. I know I'm nowhere close to this person, but I'm going to get my car. I'm going to scooch it over as close to, like, this side as possible. And if I want to look at something, and even though they're not moving towards me yet, and I want to look at something that's in their path, I will fucking stand there patiently and wait for them to make their fucking pass so that I don't have to get in their way and then fucking get back out of their way. But, like, everyone else operates on a different fucking uh, equator, man. Everyone else is just like... 
I'm here for me. I'm looking for my shit. I don't give a fuck who's around. And like, it's so annoying to me and just, it makes my skin crawl. The lack of situational awareness that just people have in general and courtesy and respect for other people. Like it just makes, I don't know. It makes my nose run, man. Like I'm so frustrated over it. Um, so, and, and to make matters worse for the listeners, our Walmart, I don't know if this is by design or not, but the cell phone service is miserable and I don't go there. It used to not, it used to not be that bad. I think they have like just recently. Yeah. I just recently, I think something happened. Yeah. But the other thing, like, dude, here's the thing. The other thing that I think is a problem. If they had more hand baskets, Less people would have fucking carts. Yeah. And it would you make You can't the ever store find a hand cluttered. basket. Ever. You can't. They're always gone. There's like six of them for the whole fucking <laughs> store. What is this about? Like, are they losing them? Are people stealing them? Yeah, I, I don't know. know. They're nice baskets. But like, like if I'm going in there and I'm running in and I only need five things, but you're making me wheel this big ass cart all over the place, getting in people's way, like it's kind of fucked. I don't know. I'm not gonna, and, then, and then they have the little yeah. shopping carts, but they're never anywhere to be found. Yeah. I'd like to check their clearance out. I found Hades there for $5 on PS5. I still haven't played it. But I went back mm. there today and uh, before you got there, and I was combing through. There a ton of Xbox games, but like the clearance aisle was just fucking nothing. There was nothing there. And I was like, are they done? Are they not doing clearance shit anymore? So I was kind of disappointed there that I didn't see anything that, you know, that I could take advantage of. A lot of people don't check the clearance at Walmart, but they have one and they do have electronics there often. So you get some good deals there once in a while, but dude, yeah. And then I, where did I go afterwards? I don't even know where I went. I went to home Depot, uh, grabbed a couple other things. I couldn't, couldn't find at Walmart that I knew I needed for this project. And then I, you know, went to my folks house and then my dad had a couple things lying around the shop that I grabbed and then I'm kind of equipped we're equipped today we took all the railings and towel hooks and you know emptied out the vanity and all the closet space and every all the space under the sink and got all that stuff out of there um everything's upstairs ready to go the tools are there so tomorrow morning I'm just I'm going and we took a door down and he's that that shit needs to be cleared out so and those old doors are always a pain in the ass because people paint it over the flathead screws and you're trying to pop off the hinges and shit. And you can't, you got to get like, you know, a hammer and a fucking flathead and get all the fucking paint out of there so you can like twist the fucking screw gun or the nut, whatever. So we're all ready to rock and roll tomorrow morning. So that's why I canceled band practice. But I, I hope to make a lot of progress tomorrow. I will tell you one thing that I'm kind of nervous about. And we always talk about our home projects, and I don't think the listeners mind, so I'll bring this up real quick. Um, We have an older home. It was built in the 40s, early 40s, I believe. And uh, when we bought the house, we were able to get an upgrade to the the box. Uh, What's what's it even called? The the switch box, the breaker box, right? So we upgraded the, the... whatever the voltage the whatever the fuck it is the power right so we if we wanted to run more more wire in the house or wanted to expand we could so we did that and that's how i got the studio and i ran new i didn't run wire my uncle's electrician he came and ran wire for us and uh upstairs um today i was trying to figure out what breaker or what breakers were for the rooms up there so i get them labeled and then we knew what we were dealing with so Chelsea's upstairs. She's on her phone. I'm downstairs on my phone. I'm like, all right, this one says this or that. And and so I'm flipping them. And then I hit one. And she goes, everything went out. And I'm like, everything? And she's like, yeah, everything is out up here. And I'm like, so our whole upstairs is powered on 115 amp breaker, apparently. So we have to get a new vent, vent in, um, an electric vent. And I know on the GFI uh, – outlet when she's running her hair dryer sometimes it'll trip that breaker and i'm thinking like shit like we might not even have enough power to run to, to pull off up there to, to power events so i called my uncle and he's like i was like is there any shortcut to like running like and and he started talking some crazy fucking electrician shit and i was like dude i don't even know what that means he started laughing um and he goes well i mean you could just run a wire down to the box and I'm like yeah but I'm on the second floor bathroom and he goes oh and he goes that changes things a little bit and I'm like yeah maybe a little bit 
And I said, maybe when I pull the walls out, I'll I'll see like where the wire's coming up. But what's weird about the way the way this one is ran, dude, and it makes no sense at all. The the one breaker that controls everything upstairs controls one outlet downstairs. I'm like, why? Why? And I'm thinking they must have ran it to that side of the house and then ran it upstairs in that corner of the house. So like instead of running it up where it would make sense to run the, the, the electric wire up, they took it to one end of the living room and went up that way and they just powered a outlet there. So did you check all of the outlets too? Yeah, dude, I did. Yep. All of them. So all the outlets and all the lights are on one breaker. Yeah, dude. That seems super dangerous. It's an old um, house. It's not. I mean, it's not dangerous. It's just fucking annoying because you have you're going to just trip a breaker if you power too much stuff. On. Right. And if I don't know what this that this vent's going to pull. So then like when I was talking to the contractor, I told him about it should this. pull almost nothing. Just so you know. Well, that's what it he said. He said he said, dude, he yeah. goes, he goes, I don't think it's going to cause a problem. He goes, if it's not tripping every time she turns on the blow dryer, the vent fan's probably going to be just fine running. And I'm like, I don't know, man, but what if it's not? And we do this whole bathroom and you guys fucking wire this and we put the ceiling in and we do all this shit. And then every time this, it, it just trips something. Like So like now my uncle is like, maybe I can come by this week if you get the walls pulled out and just run a line for you. And I was like, I would be eternally grateful. That way we at least have another source of power upstairs if we want to, you know what I mean? He should be, if you get the walls out, he should be able to fish one from the second story all the way down to the basement. That would be- from, Like within, within the bathroom, as long as he doesn't like- the, the thing is, the obstacles that are in the way, you never know what's in the walls. Yeah, right, but right. like, but if he uh, if he finds out where the other one's at, I mean, dude, even if you had to like cut some holes in your drywall and get one downstairs and then repatch them, it would be totally worth it to have. Even if you just had a breaker for just that bathroom. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, just, just, just for the bathroom. With something else. Well, I guess it also depends on if the bathroom piggybacks into the guest room. So if they're piggybacking off the bathroom power to power the guest room and we just power the bathroom with, with the new, then it's like, what are we cutting off? Right. To do that. So I don't know, like, dude, I don't like power. I don't like electric. So we're going to look into it. This is a PlayStation podcast, but I want to at least fill you in Jake on this journey and the listeners. So I'm sure I'll have more to report on this. And, uh, God, I hope to God my uncle is cool. He, he's a mechanic, and he's also a professional electrician, um, and, he, and he's a mechanic that's kind of a side hustle, and he has a garage in Clearfield. And then uh, I went and took my car there recently for inspection. I made sure to let him know when I called him. I was like, oh, I just have my car up there. I saw your saw your kid, hung out for a little bit. I was like, oh, by the way, I got this. And, and he knows that I wasn't asking for any favors because I prefaced the call. Dude, I'm not asking you to come down and do shit. Like, this is my problem. And he goes, well, you know um, – you know, eh, we'll see. He goes, I don't have any jobs going on right now. Maybe next week I can come down and say hi to your parents and take a look at that. Maybe run some wire. I'm like, that'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get into some games we're playing. And uh, this is a, I'm going to throw a curveball at the listeners. Everyone knew that I wanted to beat Moss Book 2. I'm still playing. I have one chapter left. I didn't get back into it. But what I did do, because I always, I've enjoyed the Life is Strange games quite a bit. Life is Strange True Colors was a game that didn't really make me want to buy it, but uh, it's free now for me, and I wanted to try it, so I got it. I've gotten through four, three chapters. I have one chapter. I think, the, I don't know, how many chapters are there in this game? Do we know? Have you played this game? I, know, I have no idea. You haven't nope. played it? Mm-mm. True Colors. It was the latest Life is Strange game. Um, it's a 9 out of 10 IGN, 9 out of 10 on Steam. How many chapters? Let's see here. There are five chapters, so I'm more than halfway through. Um, it's, and uh, this game was released not like the other Life is Strange games. The other Life is Strange games came out. They, they were released episodically. This came out as one big story with chapters broken up as if it was released episodically, but it wasn't. So this is all five chapters, all one download. And uh, I got to say... There, man, the, I'm, it's kind of a roller coaster with how I feel about the game. All in all, my impressions are good. 
Uh, it's a good story. Um, long story short, the story is is that you you control a character who was a uh, foster kid who uh, has been brought up through the foster system, and uh, it, this is this this game is less. I know Life is Strange two, which was. Uh, what was that one called that you and Sarah were playing? You didn't get back to it because it was kind of striking all the wrong chords, like getting your emotions riled up. Um, I think it was just Life is Strange 2. Okay, yeah. Um, that that game really knew what they were doing to push your buttons, to get you fired up and touch your emotions and stuff. This game takes a, a back step on that. It's not that. it. Unless, of course, you're a foster kid, maybe, or like you can relate more with the characters. I the only thing that um, is like it doesn't seem like there's any kind of quote unquote agenda in this game, which I really, really kind of appreciated. Um, you know, uh, or they weren't trying to touch on the socio political nature of the U.S. Right? Maybe outside of. Um, the only thing they really, really seem to touch on is corporation greed, right? Which is uh, interesting, and I'm always willing to play a game that has something to do with that. But they do touch on her being a foster kid, and she has some anger issues. And uh, she's contacted by her brother, her older brother, who she hasn't seen since she was a kid. He finds her, and uh, you essentially get out. And uh, you're going to go hang out with him in Oregon, and or Denver, maybe Colorado. Sorry, you're in Colorado, in some in some small town, mining town. And uh, the the town's beautiful. And uh, this is one of those games I'll play at 30 FPS because uh, there's no action at all in this game. You don't need you don't need like that 60 FPS action, and it does look better at 30. But, uh, yeah, there's a nice little record store in town. There, there's, like, a fucking weed shop in town, a dispensary. There's a, a plant shop, and you meet all the different characters, and you're hanging out with your brother, and, and he's working at a bar called the Black Lantern, and uh, he's into cool, like, fucking indie music like you. And the gist is is that you're – there. you always have a special power in these games, and they, they give it to you right out of the gates. Essentially, is like you are – not only can you sense other people's emotions, but when emotions are high around you, if you're not careful, you you can you consume that emotion and it affects you as a person to a degree that that you now feel exactly what that person feels. So it's a weird superpower and she can kind of read into people like empathic almost. Um, so you can walk around the town and like, uh, dial into other people's emotions and kind of hear their feelings. It's fucking weird. But Phoebe Bridges has a song uh, in here. You sit down on the record. I love the moments in this in these games where you just sit down and you can hear the character just thinking about the things that have happened so far in the game. And, uh, you know, you can just listen to some good indie rock or whatever kind of music you like, especially in the record store, and you make friends with these people. And then the, the game is... Uh, it's good, man, but it it feels like right. Same with all the other ones. Like right around chat, the end of chapter three, I'm just like, can we can we get to the end now? Like I'm ready. Mm. So two more chapters. I don't. I'm gonna do it because I've gotten this far, and, and I I am uh, pretty invested in the story. Um, man, I gotta say, it's it's a good game, and it's uh, you know if if you're not if you're looking for a game just to sit down and that maybe hits you in the feels a little bit, just about like family. Thinking about family and friends and, uh, you know, wanting to fight the system, so to speak. And, and just, you know, if you're looking for like a getaway game, kind of tune out, tune out a little bit where it doesn't require a lot of a lot of uh, attention, so to speak, as far as like button presses, secret moves, leveling up, worrying about bosses. It's a really good game for that. There's a really nice story here so far. And uh, I gotta admit, man, I like it. And uh, I'm gonna get back to Moss Book too. I don't know how much gaming I'm gonna get in. Probably in the evenings. I have the whole week off work, which is the most exciting thing about my renovation. So it's gonna open up some time, maybe. Uh, but we'll see. Now I, I feel guilty calling it a renovation, Jake, because you know I'm just gutting the thing, and you actually renovated your entire bathroom. So I don't mean to say that I'm doing the fuck all the fucking work. 
But, uh, I mean, I didn't do everything, but... But you did a lot of shit. Yeah. But, so, I'm not trying to say that I'm doing the whole fucking bathroom, but we're, we're gutting everything, and that's that's more than I've ever done for uh, a whole... Well, I built this studio, but with my dad, we framed it up, put the walls in, the floor and ceilings and lights and all, wired it, but uh, outside of that, I don't really do a whole lot of shit like that, so... Um, Took a week off because who knows what we're going to find. But that's what I've been playing, man. Um, if you get a chance to try this game, I really think both you and Sarah would like this one. It's not mm. – it doesn't uh, it doesn't fuck you up like Life is Strange 2. It's a good play. Yeah. That's – I mean I, I was kind of interested in it, but I don't know. It's just one of those things where I have to be in the right mood to play a game like that. And if – Sarah has no interest in kind of sitting through it with me, yeah. like in the evenings or something. I'm never going to play it. So mm. it's not like a game that I'm going to play before work or something when I normally do a lot of my gaming by myself. So, um, yeah, it's something I could definitely keep in mind for sure. With the change of seasons, it just felt right to try to dial into something like this before. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't play a lot of games like this, but I kind of it just felt like the right time for me. You know, just mm-hmm. kind of hit that nice slow glide just for one game and then maybe dive back in, especially after the Diablo beta and stuff. And like, I know the Resident Evil game came out, it's getting crazy good reviews and stuff, but um, Resident Evil 4 remake that is. But uh, Jake, what are you playing? So I played a bit more of the Diablo 4 beta after our last podcast. And um, I actually ended up liking it a lot more when I switched to the Sorceress class. Okay. I ended up really enjoying it, but I don't really have a whole lot more to say about it other than um, what we already said before. Mm-hmm. And uh, other than that, I just beat the story for Hogwarts Legacy. So I'm basically done with that. There's a few things that I'm going to do. They do this really stupid thing in that game where when you beat the... You know, sometimes like games will have a... Like, after you beat the main story, there's, like, one more main quest that you have to do. And it's, like, something innocuous. And it's, like, in uh, God of War, like, the God of of War Ragnarok. Don't spoil it, but there was a quest, right? I won't spoil it. But, yeah, there's, like, a quest you do right after you (laughs) beat the game. I had to say it. And uh, so, but the thing that's stupid about this is that this quest requires me to be a certain level to do it. Yeah, that's dumb. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like in the level, the level difference between what I am now and what I would be. I'm level 29 Mm -hmm. and it requires level 34 to do this quest. Mm -hmm. That's like hours of grinding for me to get to level 34 to be able to do. So I'm just going to fucking watch it on YouTube. It's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuck with this. Like, I love the game. The game, I think, is one of the best open world games I've played in years. Probably, honestly, it might be. My favorite, like, truly open world game since um, Immortals, Phoenix Rising. Really? And, yeah, it's, it's in my opinion, the world that they built is so amazing and the combat is so fun. And it's awesome just to run around that world. But, like, bro, I'm almost 40 hours into this game. Like, why are you going to make make me grind out a level just to see the end of the story like that's fucking stupid i've already beat the main bad guy i've already done like all the main side quests for all of your friends in the schools and every in the school and everything like it's 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 annoying as hell i get that they want you to stay in the world or whatever but like that should be optional yeah like you shouldn't be you shouldn't handcuff me to this fucking game so long story short and actually, Sarah's been playing it. She's been playing it and really likes it. Seth she's, said she's she doesn't play hardly any games, mode, right? Yeah, she. They have like a story mode, which, which to me, I wish more games would do this, where it's like almost impossible to die. Like it's not impossible to die, but like yeah. people that are new to video games can play it and not get frustrated. And I think that they recognize that with Hogwarts Legacy, like there's going to be a lot of people coming into games for the first time specifically because it's Harry Potter. And I think that they were like, we got to make a mode that is really easy. And I would love for them to do something like this with all of these great narrative games, like even something like The Last of Us. Like The Last of Us should have a mode where it's literally almost impossible to die. Yeah. Just so that like people can experience the game and not have to struggle with like, oh, I've never used twin stick um, like 
like mouse look kind of controls for for a video game. Like if I've never used like analog camera controls on a controller, like if you remember way back to when you first learned that, yeah. you're like fucking running around looking at the ceiling, looking at the ground. Yeah, like it is hard to circles. pick up like, on. It's not easy. It's not natural. So it's like playing I'm not the saying that every game has to be like this, right? If if difficulty is a major component of the game, like I'm not saying Elden Ring should have a mode like this, but you know, a game like that's narrative, like Uncharted or The Last of Us or whatever, should have these kinds of modes. Mm. And uh, God of War is another example. I know I'm listening to Sony games, but I don't know. So, but oddly enough, I have I haven't started it yet, but in in kind of anticipation. I have downloaded Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm thinking about starting that game. Now, I've been kind of also him hawing about Resident Evil 4 Remake. And so we'll see if maybe I jump into that or not. Yeah. But I already have Ghostwire Tokyo downloaded and I kind of want to try it out because I've always been interested. But I've always been like, oh, that'll come to PS Plus Extra eventually. Yeah. Like there's no reason for me to buy this. And now it has, and uh, I'm interested in checking it out because I've already played. Um, I've already played Resident Evil Four. I know it's amazing. I know I'm gonna love it. Um, and I'm kind of interested in maybe checking out the Horizon DLC just because I'm interested in the story after mm -hmm. the game. And we'll talk about that in the show because I've got a news point about um, that. But uh, yeah, so I may pick up. I may pick up and play Ghostwire. But I really think at. you should try Moss on PSVR. I really think so. It's 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 not Half Life Alex, and we're probably never gonna get that. But I I, I highly recommend Moss. It's good. I'm not saying that I can't like I can play a VR game in series, mm. but I need a main game that's not VR that I can play I like see in that. the morning yeah, yeah, before yeah. work and that. shit like that. So like, you know. I, I could definitely see myself picking up Moss at the same time, but yeah. All right. Well, shite, man. This has been a good intro compared to the last three intros we tried and where I couldn't hear you. Um, let's dive in to – we do every show. We listen to listener feedback. So if you have something you want to say, you want to write into our show, you can write in on the YouTube site. You can leave a comment there on our channel on the video, or you can write us at pssawesome at gmail.com, or go be a patron, patron and uh, we'll get back to you there first, probably. Um, Patreon.com slash pssawesome. And uh, Played by Ken writes in. And uh, Played by Ken says, in response to episode 269, I tried out the Diablo 4 beta on the PS4, and it wasn't a great experience. Issues queuing to log in, connection issues after creating my character, then my character randomly being teleported back to places I was standing five seconds earlier. I'm just trying to play it single player, yet its desire to force Diablo into the live service model makes it a bad experience. It also looks and runs quite poorly on the PS4. After Diablo Immortal, I'm also worried what currencies and microtransactions get added after release. Definitely a big quote unquote wait and see caveat caveat sorry on this game. And then Play by Ken also comments says shame the VR replay thing on Gran Turismo 7 turned out to be such a poor experience. Sounds like they really half assed that side of things when they could have easily done so much to enhance that experience. Thanks for the effort. To get this episode out, despite the power trouble there. Great stuff again. Thanks for writing in, played by Ken. Um, you know, yeah, the, the Diablo shit is 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 an interesting conversation because I, I do understand with Immortal, there were some huge issues with microtransactions. And uh, that was a big concern. I think that Blizzard did come out and say that they, they weren't going to try to do that on this round. But, I mean, seeing is believing in this case, so... Um, we'll have to wait and see what they do about that. Now, Jake, I think some of the issues that you had, dude, probably not you, Jake, but play by Ken probably had a lot to do with it being in beta and just everybody in the world trying to play this game at once with the queuing issues and all that stuff. I would hope that they get that hammered out at, at retail release. But, uh, I did have issues, um, with, like I said, the skeletons when I was a, uh, necromancer they were just very very choppy I, I didn't think that was an internet thing i thought it was just a coding thing the way it looked like that somehow it couldn't handle it and they were just like no skittering. i think i think it's it's the it's the lag you think that's lag with, it's all online because it was the yeah. skeletons only though it wasn't my character it was just the skellies well 
Well, I think they do that. They do that to free up like resources so that it's not lagging so much. Yeah. Because sometimes in the game when I would play, there would be certain enemies that would be like lagging mm -hmm. and then like and then like they other times they would be totally fine. The same enemies. So and I think it has, like I said, I think it has a lot to do with just server load mm -hmm. and all this kind of crap. Because I noticed there's a lot of rubber banding and all kinds of crazy shit going on. So, I, I mean, I'm not saying that you're – like, you could be right, but I have a feeling that it's just that it's so – it's so online now. Right. That, like, it's – I don't know. It is – what it is yeah and we just kind of have to accept it for what it's going to be and decide whether or not we're going to play it yeah but yeah for me i'm just a little disappointed at what i've seen so far yeah which is weird because it seems like a lot of people are really high on it and i'm kind of surprised i don't know how many people that were like oh that are like og diablo fans are super high on it but it seems like a lot of people that jumped in during like the the diablo 3 on console kind of era they seem to be high on this, which is weird to me because they've removed a lot of quality of life shit that was in that console port. Right. And I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know. So, but I mean, we bitched a lot about Diablo four in the last podcast. I don't really want to beat the horse. That's fine. Well, thanks for writing um, in played by Ken. And uh, we'll just move into the news. This episode, every, every episode we talk about some PlayStation news that has happened in the last week. Or maybe has happened outside of the last week that we just hadn't had a chance to get to. And our first news point today, Jake, and we had talked about the Unreal Engine and how cool it is to like face transplant people. You know, they, they were showing they could do this. Dude, my dream is coming true, but I didn't want to buy this game because I spent so much time in the other one. But MLB The Show 23 lets you use a face scanning app. You can create your own player and... It looks pretty good. Like, I was pretty impressed with the example on the Push Square website that they showed. And uh, it's really only a matter of time until this starts showing up, I would imagine, in other games. And uh, I absolutely am all about this. Um, it's cool. It's like a, it, like, maps your face out. So not only... Not only in the example they gave did, did it just look like a face super, like, put on, but, like... They were like, it seemed like it picked up on little blemishes and stuff here and there. Like, maybe not amazingly, but it seemed like, okay, uh, yeah, I could see this. It, and like, it wasn't like, oh man, that's that fucking dude for sure. But like, if it was you and you were playing the character, you would definitely see the likeness. Um, you know, you look in the mirror every day and know what you look like. And you'd be like, oh yeah, that's definitely my face. Now, if Jake put his face on a character and I saw the character, I, w I would be like, it kind of looks like Jake for sure. But Jake would be like, no, this looks just like me. You know what I mean? It's like it's like they're this close to nailing it completely with the example they gave. So maybe you could like take multiple pictures and really dial it in, tweak it, the lighting mm -hmm. and shit. But I was impressed with this. And MLB The Show 22, I did get my platinum in that. And, man, I really oh, – fuck, man. Pirates won the first game of the season – uh, they played the Reds in old Cincinnati and took them to school. So the Pirates are back, baby. Knock on wood. I'm happy about it. But, yeah, so MLB The Show 23, let's use a face scan. What do you guys think about scanning your face onto characters? Are you into that shit? I think it's cool. Why not? Jake, the next – do you have anything to say about that one? Uh, No, but I think this makes a lot of sense for for sports games specifically. I don't know if you remember – you used to be able to do this on some of the old um, – I feel like I did this for like – remember we we bought that <laughs> that PGA Tour game yeah. a long time ago yeah. on PS3 that we were playing together? It was like me, you, and my brother played around together I think. It was like PGA Tour the Masters or something. Yeah. And, and you could like – Po like like upload photos of yourself. Did you have to upload it, would try it to, to like approximate EA? Didn't you have like, to have like an account with yeah. EA and then download it off their account or something? It was weird. Yeah, it was some some there was some weird intermediate website that you had to use, and it was really bizarre. And whether or not it worked was kind of iffy, but um, I'm surprised this hasn't been tried more. And I have to imagine that it's going to be more common as we go along, especially with all these games with character creators. But I don't know. I'm kind of 
iffy as whether or not I'll actually use it. Because a lot of times for character creators, I just end up picking like some of the defaults <laughs> and then just picking like the hair I like. And then just like going with that. Like I, I don't put I'm not one of these people that puts like hours and hours yeah, I making love themselves in a character creator. I'd love to try it. I, I'm just it's not really me. But if if I could just scan my face and it's like, oh, there you are, then maybe I'd be more into it. Dude, is it possible that they less companies do this because like they're they don't know how to keep people from taking dick pics? Like, is that possible? Like people are just trying to put like penises for people's faces and stuff? Like obviously that'll be a thing, right? Like but someone's going to be like, I don't, I have a hard time believing that's a factor because I'm assuming it would have to recognize like this part of the picture is the eyes. This part of the picture is the mouth and all this stuff. And it's like, it's not like the model's head would just be replaced by a dong like that. Like that. Really I mean, it would look like sense. a dong, but I mean, you know, you could probably tell what it was like. I don't know. I, I'd, I'd be much more interested in that Jesus. if that was if that was an. It's option. just one boob for a face, <laughs> or even just like if you could take a picture of like your cat and like oh like your cat's head is now it's like uh, just yeah, whatever yeah. you take a picture of is now like it's a, the model. It's a bridge too. I don't far. know. That would be kind of wild. Yeah, I I do like the idea of implementing something like this in a GTA Online setting or a Red Dead Online setting, having a character that looks like you in the online world. You know. Um, it just seems really cool to me. All right, let's get to the next one. There's a big, big rumor going on at the moment um, that uh, I think Jeff Grubb had something to do with. But um, apparently the rumor is is that Sony's big showcase this year is going to be taking place before the Summer Games Fest. And that Summer Games Fest starts on June 8th. So they're saying within the next two months, Jake, we might get a huge Sony showcase and uh, if yeah, I think I've I've seen like May, like mid to late May. Yeah. We're gonna see Spider Man, right? Spider Man, got to. And yeah. I don't know what else. Maybe they double down on PSVR two and maybe give us a surprise there. Um, because let's be honest, man, the release games are are a little lacking. Um, I want to see better games. I want to see cooler shit. Um, you got this awesome headset that everyone in the VR community loves. But, like, let's get us some content. Get us some cool shit that, like, we feel we have to buy. Um, I don't know. And uh, we'll have a conversation it, maybe later this episode about VR2. It would just be nice to know what people, what, what Sony's actually doing. Because we don't know anything yeah. other than Spider-Man, Wolverine, and whatever the fuck The Last of Us thing. And Wolverine is so far out, dude. Well, Neil Druckmann and Naughty Dog did promise more factions news. By the end of yeah. the year. They so, didn't say how yeah, we'll soon. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll wait and see. But that's exciting. So let's push on to the next one. Speaking of Naughty Dog and Neil Druckmann, this is really fucking weird, man, and uncharacteristic of Naughty Dog. And I it, it shows that either they're being overworked or they're working in a space they're not they're not entirely comfortable in right now, or they have too much shit going on at once and they just miss some stuff somehow. I don't know how this works. Are they getting too big for their own good? Neil being away doing this fucking Last of Us TV series. Like, does, Needless to say, we need to pause and discuss the PC version of The Last of Us Part 1. It came out and it has a critic score of 51. And uh, now we should we should clarify mm -hmm. that there are only six scores and none of these websites are anything I've ever heard of. OK, fair enough. I didn't realize so that. I, I do understand that the game is broken on PC, but I would take this. It's so fucking funny. Ah. So like so like it's out of 56 on Metacritic, but there is a 77, a 75 three fifties and a 20. So it's kind of like across the board and just sort of averages out at 50. But I also don't like, did Naughty Dog do this port? Um, do we know that? I, I'm not saying they didn't, but I'm just, I'm wondering. I don't have an answer, dude. I think I'm trying to um, get this picture here of Joel on the, uh, this is off the Push Square site. Now, there's there's no way. There, the, Iron Galaxy. What's that? 
Why can't The it? Verge says Iron Galaxy and Naughty Dog teamed up for The Last of Us port. So who's, whose fault is this then? Well, I mean, clearly it wasn't vetted very well. Right, this dude. is a rare kind of dude. I know thing for so. Well, I mean, some of Sony's other PC ports have. Why can't I? Hold on, this didn't. PC work. ports across the board have been a problem over the last few years. For whatever reason, the PC ports of games have just been horrible messes. We're gonna try this one more time. This fucking picture, dude. So they're they've done. <laughs> Diablo 3 support. They ported Seven Days to Die. They've ported Skyrim. They've ported Overwatch. Mm. Or sorry, support Overwatch. Lead developer of Killer Instinct. Mm. Hmm, interesting. This is Iron Galaxy I'm talking about. All right. I'm, I'm trying to import this picture of Joel with every last thing that I have because there, I looked at it and I'm just like, there's no way that he looks like this in the game. This is clearly doctored. This is, it's just the textures failing. I don't even it's know so if it's that, looking. though, dude. If you look at it, it looks like someone took Microsoft or uh, Windows Paint. Those eyebrows, dude. In what world would he have eyebrows that large? It could just be sh- like the shadows, like the ray tracing or the shadows failing. I don't know. Here, I've got, like I've got it pulled too. up now on the on the YouTube channel. You get a load of this, watchers. Like, look at that fucking face. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty funny. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. It, it doesn't look like that's even a a real render. It looks like someone literally took a bit like a like a black paintbrush and painted his eyes and a little bit above his like below his cheekbones and then something on his hair and. uh the white in the beard clearly is an issue. Uh, that's like that's like shadows and shading and like light rendering and stuff. But the the big bushy eyebrows, man. There's no way that's real. Is that is that really from a screenshot? Did somebody do, because it's a PC port? Did somebody like mod this to make it look even worse? Is my question. I mean, it looks really fucking bad. Um, he looks terrible. Uh, not a handsome dude at all in this rendering but uh yeah anyways it's weird there are big issues with it my my question is is because they're finally getting a little bit of negative press is uh does this put a stain on their relationship with this pc crowd because there was something that came out that said naughty dog will exclusively be working on pc and ps5 for ps4 developing for pc and ps5 forward so if if that's the case uh I, it's still selling well. I mean, of course, it's going to sell well with the with the push of the of the HBO show and just the just the general knowledge that the game's fucking rad. But mm-hmm. like, it's weird that you know this is this is where we are in the world. The Naughty Dog released this thing, and it wasn't. Uh, push Square had a uh, live playthrough. They're playing on Steam Deck though, and it's like, dude, you're gonna fucking try to play this game on Steam Deck? Like, I don't trust that. But they were showing like the camera and it was like the first scene with the daughter sleeping and like everything was running fine and she was sleeping and then she uh, reached to grab the phone and then she was sleeping and then she reached to grab the phone and then she was sleeping and then it like smash cut to something else. And it's like, it just looks like you can't run this game on Steam Deck, man. That's what it looks like to me. And then... I don't know, it seems like there's some going on. I, I don't know why it would be so... <laughs> fucked like that i mean it seems kind of kind of wild well it's very uncharacteristic of naughty dog to let something like this happen um who knows though it probably wasn't them that let it out it was probably sony that was just like we gotta get this out here it is yeah because they wanted to they wanted to ride the wave of the fucking tv show Mm -hmm. and instead of like letting it be done Mm -hmm. and letting it be finished they uh they pushed it out the window are there new scores for this now on Metacritic? I know the screen grab had no. had on you checked. What the screen grab is, is what is still up on Metacritic. I just checked. Interesting. Huh. That is so strange. And it's getting review bombed. 1.7 from users, but I don't care about that. Um 
Yeah, just people just aren't happy with the technical problems with it. So the, really, that's the reason why it's getting shat on. Anyways, just so the listeners know, uh, that's that's a that's a miss on Naughty Dog's part for for once a strike against them um, on their perfect fucking score of for everything they've ever done. Um, weird. I think they've bitten off more than they can chew right now. Get back to working on factions, fellas, ladies and gents. All right. Let's talk about SSD storage real quick. This one is a quick news point. I just want to bring it up because I brought it up on the show that I bought a WD internal SSD expansion for my PS5 and I only bought one terabyte. Can you just say Western Digital? You and your acronyms. What was the one thing I said one time and you're like, don't don't say it like that. Don't don't say that. It was it was uh, the Dungeons and Dragons thing. Um, oh, God, what was it? Oh, geez, it was about their their new rules, and it, it was like a big fiasco, and I used the acronym. Like, don't say it like that. Just say what it is. You just don't like acronyms. I, I've decided for a PlayStation show that goes by PSTIA, I'm surprised, Jacob, that you don't like We it. never fucking call it that, just so you know. We always call it by its name. We just use <laughs> So you that do hate acronyms. The, dude, it, here's the problem. Yeah, hit me with it. Whenever it literally is not easier to say the acronym than the actual oh, fucking damn. word, don't use the fucking acronym. It sounds stupid. It's five syllables versus W4. Western Digital WD. Yeah, I'm saving one syllable. That's a valid point. Fair enough. But still. So you're you're only saving one syllable and – I'm trying to be economical get it. here. But at least you're not saying like fucking SNES and shit like that. Dude, that I won't say that. Crazy. The- verbalizing. The only thing worse than, than stupid acronyms is verbalizing acronyms. Making them a word. Yeah. yeah. They do that with. Pastilla. Yeah. ASCAP is the uh, association something composers, artists, performance or something. like that. It's a musician's guild I'm a part of. Everyone calls it ASCAP. And then all I can say when I say it is ass cap. <laughs> it sounds like you're yeah. fucking putting a cap on your ass somehow. Like, yeah, I'm a member of ass cap. And they're like, what? You know? But I, yeah, ASCAP is a little harder to say than ass cap. And the whole thing that yeah. it stands for, no one can remember. So it's just like, that's a, that's a loss all three ways. I think ass cap is, it's one of those rare instances where, Ask it up. it rolls off the tongue better than the acronym or the actual saying of the word. But then it just sounds like, silly, though. Like there are different ways of saying that. Is it as as cap or is it ass cap or is it ass cap? No matter what, as it's, cap. I guess sounds like you're saying ass. I think they want you to say as cap, which is hard for me to do. The A to Z is hard as as cap. It's like saying jazz, but you're not saying the J in front, so it makes it harder to pronounce. I don't know, man. Your wife's the fucking phonetic person. Ask her how she would pronounce that. I, w- I think it's ASCAP. Anyways, dude, the SSD storage, the Western Digital, one terabyte uh, internal hard drive that I bought and put into my PS5 recently was like 100 some dollars. And uh, you can buy a two terabyte now for like 120 bucks. Um, Amazon has like some sort of Amazon day sales or something. So if you're looking to upgrade, there you go. Just wanted to let listeners know. I like to clue, clue them in yes. on, on things that I find. Um, Western digital black is, uh, it's one of the best hard drives on the market. Mm. I think, I think like the, this Samsung 980 Evo might be slightly better, mm. but, um, I know that I think Sony has like some kind of marketing partnership with Western Digital on their WD Black uh, hard drive. I think on the packaging it says compatible and it comes with the heatsink already with it. So you don't have to like worry about it. You just fucking plug and play and it's good. Which is nice. Yeah, super nice. So for like 120 bucks, two terabyte internal SSD that comes with a heatsink, that's a steal, especially from that company. You can fucking fill that bitch up too. And then whenever it's done, you can complain about not having enough space for more shit. Yeah, man, I don't know. All right. Well, this is this is news worth reporting, even though like it, the writing was on the wall a while back. E3 has been canceled. 
officially canceled, um, according to an article from Push Square. This, of course, is a result from major studios pulling out of E3. And uh, Sega and Tencent confirmed they weren't going to take part. Ubisoft had pulled out. Sony wasn't going to be a part of it. Um, so we have a lot of independent state of plays and uh, brands opening their own channels, right? Their own direct line to their consumers for delivering the message they want to deliver. And uh, it's making showcases like E3 less relevant. And if it's not making them less relevant, if your argument is it's not making them less relevant, well, um, if they want to continue to be relevant, they need to scale the fuck back because they have very, very few big players now interested in going through them and being a part of it. So um, the Summer Game Fest, which is the, the the main thing to look forward to this summer, this this year, um, is uh, Jeff Keighley's little baby. And, uh, you know, we have that to look forward to, I suppose. But time will tell where all this shit goes. Like, I think the VGAs are always going to exist, um, you know, and that's probably like, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about any of this shit, but it's it is interesting. And I think video game had a really big bubble. Video games had a huge bubble at one point. And I think that's exactly what it was, was a bubble that everyone tried to take advantage of for a little bit. And now it's starting to even keel a little bit out. How do you find your new audiences? How do these consoles find their new audiences, man? They've had us since we were kids, man. We, we've been into video games for a long time. But I I think self the cell phone market and like just the fucking social media market is ridiculous right now. Um, that's not to say the kids aren't playing video games because they are, but it's just like a different, it's a different era. And, uh, I think that the use for these kind of big video game shows is really not, not important. Um, Gamescom, I think is pretty cool still. What, and then what's the one that, uh, is that the one where all the developers get together and fucking talk or no? No, that's GDC. That just happened. That's what I'm like, talking about. That, GDC that, is cool. That, that was where they did that Unreal thing. Yeah. Was that shit, that shit's still important. Um, that's it. I mean, that's for the developers though. That's not for the consumer. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that here's the problem is that if you want events for like fans to get together, there's already shit like that with stuff like packs in, in, uh, Gamescom and stuff. But when you're talking about these big showcases, like most of E3's power back in the day were the, were the, first party press conferences mm. and the big publisher press conferences. Yeah. And when so like, for example, even like two or three years before COVID Sony wasn't going to E3 because they kind of realized like, Hey, why should we spend 10, $15 million on our showcase and a pr presence at E3 right. when we can spend a couple hundred grand and make a few of these like online showcases every year. And our popularity has only grown in that time. Why the fuck would we go through all this hassle of going to E3? And yeah, I don't know. I, it, it seems, I guess it's kind of, I know people are kind of disappointed because it's kind of like the end of a, of an era. Mm hmm. But honestly, the only thing that I, that bummed because I never went to any of these things. Dude, never. I, I honestly neither did I. I, I think don't know I, if I could. I think it would have been fun at one point in my life, but now that I'm older, it, I'm just yeah. not. It might have been fun, like back in the day. Right now, I definitely don't think I could. I could handle it. The only thing that annoys me is that the thing that the only thing that was nice about E3 is that we got almost all of the major news for the year at one time. We knew when to expect it. We got it. And that was it. Whereas now it's just like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. Nobody knows when anything's happening. And then a, a, a fucking state of play gets announced like two days before it happens. And everyone's mm. like, what's this? And it's like, I don't know. And it's some random shit that you don't care about. Mm. Or it happens to be like something that's fucking awesome. Like you never really know. And that was the one thing that was nice about E3 is that we knew – going into it that that's when the splash was going to happen yeah. and we were ready for yeah. it whereas like now it's like who the hell knows and so everything has kind of gotten a little bit 
I feel everything's kind of gotten a little bit – I personally have gotten a little bit apathetic about a lot of the news cycle just because of it. Like I used to get hyped every year for the press conference because that was the fire hose. Whereas like now it's like state of play is happening and then they're like, oh, it's going to be around indies. And I'm like, OK, well, I'll check it out, but I'm not going to get super excited. And then Summer or Games like, Fest is all indies, indies. And then every once in a while you have like a publisher just say, oh, we're working on this game, but it's not coming out for three years. And then it's just like, OK. And then, yeah, and then it's know. like, oh, there's a big update for this game. Let's talk about that. You know, and it's just like. Well, you know, like all the important, well, quote unquote important shit, uh, you're right, used to just all come out on one night and like that was, or like one weekend or whatever. That was awesome. And you didn't know like who was making deals with who and what third parties were going to be on Sony stage and all this shit. Because like, like the last State of Play, for example, like before the State of Play even happened, they were like, this is going to be VR stuff and fucking Suicide Squad. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, if I don't care about Suicide Squad or VR stuff, I'm not even going to fucking bother watching this thing. I'll just read the the bullet points on my favorite website the next day. And if, you know, if I even care that or much. Or just watch the YouTube whereas videos like, later. Whereas like before they were, they had us captive. It's mm. like, you didn't know. And yeah, it might not be, you might be lackluster. Or we might be disappointed that they spent 20 minutes on Suicide Squad. But at least going into it, we were like, you know, we knew that there was going to be something yeah. in that hour and a half presentation for us, even if it wasn't. I say us, I mean like maybe me or you specifically, even if the whole thing wasn't for me, mm -hmm. because it was the whole year at once. But I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I don't. There's not really a whole lot more to say about this. Yeah. It's it's just kind of like I'm kind of surprised that they didn't just go through with it and have one last kind of go to just see if the audience was there yeah. but maybe it was more than just the the vendor participants maybe it was that funding they had very little interest in the community for even showing up to this yeah, they probably didn't have a lot of funding so, and they probably didn't have you know the it's just i think it was the writing on the wall they were just losing steam and you know it's just it's just a sign of the changing times i think so yeah definitely anyways next news point is uh Nice to see, but I don't know how much of it is advertisement and how much of it is real hype. And uh, the reason I say that is this was on the PlayStation blog. Hiroshi Takai, the director of Final Fantasy 16, told the PlayStation blog there were huge advantages of developing this game for the PS5. Quote, the two main things that struck me were the size of the memory and the speed of the SSD. I've worked with a lot of different hardware over the years, and many have failed to strike the right balance between the capabilities of the hardware and the size of the memory. And then uh, later on, he was quoted as saying, however, the PS5 is different. It comes with enough memory installed to take full advantage of the hardware. And then later on, he goes on and he says, as for the SSD, as we were building the game, I was simply blown, blown away by how fast it was. So it seems like Hiroshi Takai's uh, big thing is like just the ability, the speed of the PS5 was impressing him. Um, but this is cool. And again, it was on the PlayStation blog. And of course, he's going to sing praises about the system. Um, but I mean, I hate it when this kind of stuff gets released on these channels because you don't know how much of it is 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 just like lip service and just advertising for the brand. Mm -hmm. And how much of it is like, is this is this game director like really that fucking stoked that he wanted to then make sure that Sony knew how excited he was for this um, that to, to, to be developed? Like, is that like where where's the truth somewhere in the middle there? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. But I would say that it's probably like I would say that it, what he's saying is probably true, but at the same time. It is also true that this article would not contain any negative experience that he had with the PlayStation right. 5. So you have to take everything that he says with the expectation that you are not getting the flip side of the coin. Mm. Now, it's entirely possible that working with the PS5 is nothing but a joy. There's no issues whatsoever. It's great. Sony's awesome. It's highly unlikely. 
But I will say that it does seem to be a common theme that people are pretty de- – developers are pretty happy with the PlayStation 5 and the hardware and the specifically the SSD and the memory size that they've come up with mm-hmm. because of the way that the Xbox Series X uses its memory. It's becoming a problem for developers and which is weird because the Microsoft consoles have historically always been ones that were easy to develop for. But the way that they decided to use the memory in the Xbox is causing some development issues. So, I again, I believe what he's saying, but I also believe that there were probably struggles that he's not allowed to talk about. Yeah, yeah, probably. But that's good news. This game just is more and more on my radar. Um Next news point here, and this is going to be another quick one. I brought up the Hot Wheels game last episode, and I was like, man, if it's anything like Hot Wheels Unleashed, it's going to be fucking dope. And uh, it turns out this Hot Wheels game requires you to have an actual car, an actual Hot Wheels car. And it's a specific kind of car. And uh, But it's like that Mario Kart game that came out for the uh, the Switch. There's a mixed reality game. And the way they do this is you set up these bridges and stuff in your house and you put glyphs on it and the car that you're racing around apparently has like a little camera on it or something. I don't know how it works. And as you're racing in the game, the car in real life is scooting around your living room and it's like, it's really cool. And this is the kind of shit that like as a kid, I would just go bonkers over and, uh, I'm not sure if this is a gimmick or if it's cool. You know what I mean? Like, there's I a, have no. I'm like trying to. And trying to sorry, look up the trailer. I, yeah, it's I, yeah. really kind of cool, but it, is it too? Is it a gimmick? Is the question? Oh, it's 100 percent a gimmick, but it is kind of wild that they. That's what I'm saying. So if it's awesome, technology. is it a gimmick? Because like you could say that about VR. Is VR a gimmick because it just. Or is it actually but is, there, cool? is there a real car? Yeah, there is a real car. Okay. There has to be. And I think I read somewhere that there is. Very interesting. If you haven't seen this, look it up because it's really, really... Yeah, the kid's holding the car in the in the uh, clip. It's got a car with this little camera on top of it. And uh, it must connect blue, via Bluetooth or something to the game. And uh, it... Like you, you map out the track in your house and the game converts it in the game somehow and it makes the borders. So the, the little car has a camera on it. So like you're literally racing. A real car. It's basically, it's basically a remote control car, but you're controlling it via your PlayStation through your television. Yeah. So like you see what the car sees through the television. But then they, they throw in mixed weird. reality. So like like so there's like other cars too. Yeah, there's other cars. There's like fake cars, and then there's like real track elements and stuff like the glyphs on the obstacles that you put in in the game when you're looking at the screen turn into real things. Hmm. So it's like this mixed reality fucking thing. It's cool. Very strange. I can't imagine the amount of brain it would take to make a game like that, dude. Hmm. I don't that know. That is really neat. Yeah, it is really neat. It's a, one of those things I'd like to try and see you happen, but I would never pay for it. But is a kid, if I'm a kid, it's a gimmick, but if I'm an adult, it's cool. That's all I'm going to say. That's 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 yeah. how I know what's what. Um, moving on to the next news point. Uh, what was that game even called? It was called uh, Hot Wheels. Rift and Race or something. What was it called? Called like Rift and Race or something like that. Uh, I don't know. We should probably say what the game's called. I don't Rift Rally. Rift Rally. Rift Rally. Hot Wheels Rift Rally. Um, so the next news point is we're gonna touch we're gonna circle back on that Diablo beta super briefly, just to let the listeners know. Um, they released their stats and uh I was amazed by the total hours played. It was it was only out for like a week, I think. Sixty one million five hundred and sixty thousand four hundred and thirty seven hours were played. Of the beta. I mean, just for the open beta, that was only three days, Friday, Saturday, oh, Sunday. Oh, so in and, three days. And Monday morning, because it, it ended at noon on Monday. I mean, uh, what is that? What, what What is that divided by? How many days is that? 
Get the calculator out. It's, it's years. 61, 5, 60, 4, 37, divided by 24 hours, uh, divided by 365. That is 7,027 years of gaming that happened in three days. 7,000 years um, people put into that game in three days. If that's not an indication of people's interest, I don't know what the fuck is. Is that real? Yeah. I don't know. But people were hungry for this game. Um, uh, total player deaths were over almost 47, 47 million deaths. Uh, players butchered over 1, 1,700. Uh, seven, sorry, 1. 1.7 million. Uh, player deaths by Ashava. I don't know what Ashava is. I'm guessing one of the bosses. Uh, 10 million. Um, Ashava deaths. Ashava died 107,000 times. Um, there was I think not. The coolest stat is monsters killed almost 30 billion. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Yeah, dude. And here's the crazy one no one that fought Ashava were able to solo and kill Ashava solo. So that is a sign of this a game pretty much needing to be a group game. Right. I like how it says like in red, almost one question mark. There might have been someone that got really close. <laughs> what if you were the only one? That would be cool. I, I would hope that if the, if you were the only one, they'd like throw you a, like a T-shirt or something. That would be pretty yeah, dope. Yeah, dude. I killed a shower or some shit. It should be like a fucking real trophy or a free game. All right. Those are some interesting stats. Thanks, Blizzard, for that. And then uh, – so the next news point is uh, essentially the new PS Essential games coming out for April. Um, nice little list of games again. Meet Your Maker. Uh, not super interested in this, but it looks fine. It's like a F FPS create your world kind of thing, I think. Um, you know, create your custom matches. I, I think there's some of that to it. And then Sackboy, Big Adventure. Jake, you have this game and you've played it. I've never played it. And mm -hmm. uh, we're getting Tales of Iron, which is a hand-drawn RPG that looks really good. Um, it does look pretty interesting. Yeah. It's like a side-scroller RPG, kind of almost similar to, like, uh, Dragon's Crown, if you played that. Um, but it's, like, hand-drawn, almost like a... I don't know if you remember the Redwall books, like, the lead characters were mice. I don't, I don't remember know if you that. remember this. No. But, uh, like, it looks like the main character in this is, like, a mouse or, or a ferret or something like, like fucking that. Fucking five kind of rodent. Um, but, yeah, it it, uh, it looks cool. Some scathing. Sure. Yeah. Might uh, check her out. Yeah, dude, go check her out. Um, yeah, so very nice list of PS Essential Games. And I got two more news points, and then, uh, yeah, we'll probably call. I wanted to have a PS VR 2 discussion. LJ kind of made me think about it a little bit. He sent me a text. Um, I don't know if we're going to get to that this episode. We're running a little long. My stomach's kind of sick. I'm hungry. Jake, you haven't eaten dinner yet. But let's get to this next one. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West is uh, getting that DLC that we talked about real soon. Um, and it's... Uh, the DLC is PS5 exclusive. I don't know if we said that last episode. I think we had said it in episodes prior when the DLC was announced. But this is not going to run on PS4. So, And part of what the studio came out to say is that um, part of the reason is that the, the clouds that they're using in the game are just so fucking fantastic. <laughs> fucking clouds, dude. Not digital clouds. Like like save it to the cloud. It's like the actual fog in the, the air clouds. clouds. In the sky yeah. that you're going through. Exactly. So um I'm glad that the clouds are the reason why this is PS5 only. Yeah. Seriously though. But maybe we're gonna get a little taste of Horizon on PS5 um exclusivity and maybe we're gonna see the power, the true possibility, which would be nice actually. So we'll see what cool, this yeah. yeah we'll see what this DLC looks like. Um, and again, the price point was nice, twenty some bucks, I think. I don't know. Anyways, one last news story that has people absolutely losing their shit online is Multiverses was apparently a beta, and it was free to a lot of everybody, and people had gone in and purchased shit in game content, right, to play this online, and the studio now has come out. And they're saying, 
we're taking multiverses off until 2024. The beta is over. <laughs> so people are just like, I fucking spent money on this. Like, and now I can't use it. And they're like, well, the training room will be available, which is just like, you could use the character in the training room and learn their move sets against AI. But like, it's like defeats the purpose of the fucking everything. It's a weird fucking I, move. This is pretty fucked up. If you're can't they just leave the beta open and then just leave it up, roll out a version one? Like, yeah, just like I've never seen even like early access games. Why do they offer paid content on a beta? Yeah, that version stays up until the day of release and then they roll out 1.0. Price changes on the store and everybody gets an update. That's how early access works. I don't ever recall one time seeing multiverses being referred to as a demo in any of the I thought it was just out I thought it was literally that's the game yeah I did too I had no idea this I maybe maybe like early access or something but I never they never gave an indication that like oh this is something that's going to be up for a bit and then we're going to take it down for literally almost a year so that we can fuck with it and screw you if you're interested. And I, I'm actually allowed to do this because this is a public uh, post that they put up, a public video on their Twitter feed. Um, this is from Multiverses. I'm just going to let this thing rip on the podcast and let the listeners hear what they had to say about it. Why not, Jake? Um, they said, MVPs, thank you for the support during open beta. The feedback and the inspiration has been amazing. Open beta will close on June 25th as we prepare for full launch in early 2024. Multiverses will be back better than ever with new content, features, modes, and more when we return. This was actually a successful game, and uh, they're pulling it. So let's listen. They put a video up, a little uh, PR video up. We'll just play it on the podcast so you can hear it. They want you guys to hear it. This is their side of the story. Let's put it up. Hi, everyone. This is Tony from Player First Games, and I'm here today on behalf of the entire Multiverses team to say thank you for your support during Open Beta. We've been excited to see the interest and enthusiasm from the community, and your feedback has been invaluable to us. We continue to be humbled by the awards the game has received and excited to see the enjoyment that Multiverses has brought to players. Hmm. Throughout our Open Beta, we've been working hard to build the best gameplay experience, and we appreciate all the inspiration you've given us. Our open beta has been an important learning opportunity for us and a stepping stone to the next phase of multiverses. We know there's still a lot of work to do. As a result, we have a clear view of what we need to focus on, specifically the content cadence of new characters, maps, and modes to give you more ways to enjoy the game. Along with an updated net code and more matchmaking improvements, we'll also be reworking the progression system based on your feedback and looking at new ways for you to connect with your friends in the game. To do this the right way, We'll be closing the Multiverses open beta 90 days from today. As part of this process, we'll be pausing updates and taking the game offline as we prepare for the They're launch closing of Multiverses, it down in three months. which we're targeting for early 2024. I'm sure you're wondering what this means for you. Yeah. During this downtime, all online modes and features will be unavailable. You'll have limited offline access to the training room, known as a lab, and local matches, along with access to your you're characters and cosmetic dead, items within these modes. Time. We do know that this news might be disappointing, but rest assured, Multiverses will be back. We'll also ensure that all your progress and content will carry over when Multiverses returns next year with a variety of new content, features, and modes. Along the way, we'll be providing updates, so keep an eye on our social channels and website. Thank you again to the entire Multiverses community. We greatly appreciate your passion and excitement and look forward to our next chapter with you. Thank you. Huh. Yeah, so they 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 said we know this is going to upset some people, and they they essentially just told everyone what they're going to work on. They did say they were going to work on some net code, uh, you know, for this, and they're taking all of the players' suggestions to mind, and they're going to be updating a lot of shit. So hang with them when it goes back online in 2024. You're going to be able to keep all of your progress and all the things, but they are turning it off. In the next 90 days. They said it in, in 90 days, they're going to take it off. And this was posted on March 27th at midnight. <laughs> Fucking drop the bomb at midnight. 
Uh, yeah, jeez. Dude, that's wild because I think a lot of people are really into that game. We'll see if we get flagged for putting that on the podcast. I don't think we should. I mean, it's informative and we're offering commentary on it. And they put it out there publicly, their PR section. So what the hell? We'll spread the word for you. That's the decision they made. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, I did play multiverses. My brother was really into it. I wonder if he has any info. Uh, I think he kind of fell off the wagon for a bit, though. Um, you know, I think he's back on like Genshin Impact and shit. And he, he liked that Diablo Four beta, but I wonder what his opinion would be about this. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what that would be like. It's I've never seen it done before like this. They must have like I wonder if there's a legal thing that happened with one of the. I mean, they have so many uh, IPs. Dude, all of these all of these characters are characters that WB owns. I don't think they license anything for this game. So I wonder what the hell. I could be wrong about that. Why are they pulling it off? I mean, it's just weird. I, I I guess listeners, let us know. I mean, you think it's a dick move? Like, ah, I'm kind of thinking it is. But they might have their reasons, and they just told you their reasons. I just feel like, why can't you just leave the game up in the state that it is? Unless they don't have a way to work on it as in-depth as they need to. And there's some sort of technological reason why they got to pull it off. I don't yeah, know. man. I have no idea. It's so weird. We don't have any new games to talk about coming out this week because we're recording this a little bit early, which is good news. So I don't have any new games coming out, Jake, to talk about. So that's it. That's all we got for the show. That's all we have, and that's all she wrote. Thank you for tuning in to episode 170 of PS. This is awesome, a PlayStation podcast. Don't forget to leave us a comment. Tell us how we did. Tell us how you feel about these topics. Tell us what you're having for dinner. Um, Jake, do you have anything you'd like to say before we cut out for the evening? Nope. I'm excited to go downstairs and make some fucking dinner because I am, at this point, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, dude. I hear that. Uh, we're probably going to order some pizza. Uh I just did dishes, so I don't want to, like, cook. Um, yeah, maybe we'll order some pizza. I don't know. I It's almost nine, so maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, like Endless Dungeon, Escape the Academy, and Exodemon. P.S. P.S. This is, this is awesome. awesome.